So the question is, would you ever have this artwork on your wall, or do you think it is, in quote unquote, super silly? And this is in the guy's living room, so this is his artwork okay. on his wall. As, it, as you can see, I, I'm, I'm not really an art, well, I, I don't really have anything on my walls. Well, it's, um, you can judge by whatever he's, <laughs> that is his wall that I spoke to um, him in front of. I respect it, but I don't think I would. <laughs> So now you've got a feel for the quality of this podcast. Yeah, okay, I, I love it. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> so is this a nice balance of colours? You know, I guess. It's, you know. Oh yeah, it's great. It's, it's all right when, like, when my um, <laughs> when my dad lived by himself and my mum like moved in. My dad had like, you know, there's like in, in like a lot of old people houses in like the 80s and 90s. There, there was like flying swans. They were like ceramic swans. My dad had flying penises, and my mum's like, you need to turn them down. He's like, no. I swear everyone's got like the penis <laughs> bottle opener from holiday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the wooden one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I, don't, yeah. I don't understand it. My, as you can see, uh, my, it's, my, I think is a decent level of decoration. You know, like. You know what? Um, I've got about five or six like prints that I've got in frames, including my own vinyl that I got all, like custom framed and everything. Just haven't got around to putting it up yet. And I'm just, because I repainted like my whole room in COVID. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take everything off the wall, repaint it, nice, fresh new room, and then I just haven't put anything up because I'm too scared. <laughs> I, I always, um, I'm, I'm stuck because, like, I like to be fairly plain with the colours so that I can then just put stuff on, like, as you can see, stuff on it and around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I moved in here, this whole room was, like, a really, like, dull lilac colour. Like, the ceiling is mm. and the kitchen was <laughs> red. Um, the bathroom was lime green and the oh, nice. was also lilac with a hint of dark purple. Um, <laughs> like ceiling and all, not just the walls. Like it was. Uh, like, yeah, like, I respect the commitment of whoever wanted that, but I think that might give me a migraine. Yeah, I, I mean, I do remember seeing the space, just thinking the space is okay. I can change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to look, you got to have vision. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> speaking of vision, I'm going to neatly move into something something hopefully hopefully more useful than what people might actually be expecting to hear but who needs that um so i'm always interested with um i'm always interested in people that write lyrics because i just i think it's um and the conversations i've had with people before um they regardless of the style of writing lyrics it's always quite a sort of um i think the the best word is almost quite like an exposing process you have to kind of even if you're not writing about yourself, you're writing about your take on something. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's not your take on something, it's how you you see things in a certain way, and it's it's just very personal to the the artist. Or so feel free to disagree. But um, I was just wondering how your how you kind of tie your lyrics into you as a person, and like or how much they tie in, and and um, kind of what the importance of them, how sort of how you. I guess how you process the whole lyrical thing. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. Um, it's um, it's one of those things for me, like I kind of straddle this like point of like, obviously it is a personal um, point of view, but it also is something that I want people to be able to relate to. So I try not to link it too much to my personal e exact experience, but I kind of give it like a broad spectrum. And um, we don't, we don't do necessarily like concept albums, but a lot of our, Albums have a lot of like underlying themes or like a connecting like over or overarching sort of umbrella theme, um, like with Welto. Then each size the other week, shorten it to Welto just for reference in case you need to do that because it is a bit of a mouthful. Um, um, it was kind of like based off this and um, the Magician Tarot card. And because when we were recording, I was like, um, I was kind of deep going. I kind of knew what the the concept in my head was, but I was like researching a little deeper. I'm super super into like deep meaningful stuff i did um i did a photography degree um so i uh, and i love like media studies and stuff like that so i'm super into like the every back like the absolute end that no one cares about kind of level of stuff like i watch like an hour and a half youtube like long youtube videos about easter eggs and things like that so <laughs> say easter eggs do you mean literal chocolate easter eggs or do you mean like i wish <laughs> Or do you, yeah, I like didn't know. <laughs> yeah, like hidden, like, like, okay. yeah, like it means like like in hidden things in like yeah. you know like um, especially like big like fantasy things and things. I'm well into that sort of stuff. So I was like, you know, oh, you know, how can I sort of create this world around what I've what I've created? And um, I came across like the tarot cards, and I was really, I really did a lot of research. I bought books. I did, I, you know, I bought everything. And um, the magician tarot was quite an interesting one because it's sort of like 
encapsulated everything on the negative side, but also on the positive side, which is what I quite liked. So that's where the album name came from. It's like within each lies the other is kind of like a play on a, um, as above, so below, which is kind of the concept of the card. And um, so it's like within each of us lies another you that you're not particularly proud of. It's like there's always like two, especially at the time that like, I was kind of like angry and really upset, but also like really proud and really happy of where I was. Um, so generally that's kind of what the lyrics like encapsulate. And that's kind of, and then, yeah, that gener like, general concept was, what I wanted to kind of push and people seem to have really um, grabbed onto that, which is really, really nice. Um, and they really sort of like that idea. And yeah, I just really wanted it's, it's that yin and yang, you know, kind of like as above, so below was kind of that, the main idea really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, um, the, I always find it interesting when we're talking about that kind of that, you know, that inner battle between like the, the you that you don't, you're not so keen on and the, and than the you that you want to be um do you find that there's kind of parts of your sort of or do you feel that you deal with that process sort of in in relation to like your you know i find for example like i want to be you know i want to be a musician i want to be involved in the music industry and i love keeping busy and i mean this is more even just on like a professional level mm -hmm. but then there's the other part of me that's just like really unproductive and sits around doing dick all and i'm just like okay this is but obviously you can take that to a much deeper sort of personal level you know there are um how do you find sort of dealing with that um that other self if you like is it something that you've over your years just sort of i guess developing in life that you've have you got better at that or do you still find that 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 other annoying version of you is kind of always knocking on the door um yeah, I think knocking at the door is the best way to describe it. It's like, it's not fully gone. And I think it's definitely improved. And I think especially the album was definitely like a kind of commentary on like, I was really bitter and really angry in songs like Wallow. Like that was kind of like the equivalent of what you described in the studio as like screaming into a pillow song. Like that's, that's like, that's like the heaviest one. And like, then you've got kind of songs that are more fragile and more like open, like Wither and, you know, and then you've got songs like on the inside, which are kind of like, in between, you know, like same with hiding for myself, it's kind of like it's like looking more from a third person perspective of like myself. I don't know, it's really weird, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's I'm still always battling it, but I definitely feel like I'm on the more positive side of where I am now. I think I'm not I'm not as bitter. Um, I'm not as angry. I think I, I'm definitely not as angry. I think there is still part of me that are bitter about certain things, and but I think it's good to be honest about that. I think it's because I think that's part of the, the process of accepting it is that you, you you can accept that you're bitter about things and but you can acknowledge them and, and grow from it and I think that's definitely like you know like in Wither one of the lyrics is like in death we resurrect bring ourselves to life when we wither and die and it's like you know when you know that you're being that worst version of yourself like just acknowledge it and and create and, and sort of accept it and move on and create a better you out of it almost yeah I think um something I've always so something that actually I say I've always uh, more recently um, been trying to do myself is um, tie personal value less to achievements because um, yeah I know I know you said sort of through the process of doing the album and and, and sort of writing and I'm guessing you sort of through the whole release process kind of feeling like you sort of getting to a, a better place through sort of through that. Um, do you feel like the, that kind of process helped you? And the reason I asked the question, not so much just um, as a yes or no, but um, with a slightly different spin on it being, um, so for example, I sometimes worry that I place my sort of self-worth or that sort of self, not to say self-importance, but like um, value in the things mm -hmm. I achieve. And do you ever worry that, sometimes when you look at you know it's a very musician thing to be sort of working towards the next i know exactly what you're saying i know exactly what you're saying you almost don't want to tie as much as the success is great you almost i feel like i try and avoid tying to those things and actually it's about that intrinsic happiness and do you find that sometimes do you find yourself maybe almost getting like carried away because you've had some really cool stuff happen particularly in the last few years do you ever find yourself almost getting a bit reliant on that or a bit carried away in terms of like where you place your sort of self-worth in that sense yeah so the weird thing is so like i think a lot of my like you know feeling since the albums come out like this is what i'm saying when i've grown from my bitterness grown from my anger um 
has come from a lot of like my how I like what I've achieved and stuff like that and I do have to sit back and I think it's just I mean not everybody but myself personally is that I'm always looking at the next thing I'm, I'm never looking at what I've actually done and I do have to sometimes sit and go no I have done so many fucking cool things that somebody somebody would give a, a fucking like arm and a leg for literally to do at once in their life but I do this on like a regular sort of occurrence or once a year or you know like doing like download festival for example I mean you know how many people would say I would absolutely love to do download and I sort of like sit back and go yeah <laughs> I sort of sit back and go not that I don't enjoy the process but you know you sort of sit back and go fuck yeah when I was like 15 I would have given anything to be in a band that's doing what I'm doing now but yeah at the same time you can't help but when you're in your situation and you're around it you sort of go oh fuck say why are we not getting this why are we not there by now why are our numbers going down you know it's sort of like but yeah you're going wait a minute like it's, it doesn't matter like as long as like we feel like we've achieved something which I definitely feel I can't speak for everybody in the band but I do feel like we all kind of sit in a similar place so we all feel like we've achieved so much we've been a band for so fucking long people don't realize we've been a band like a proper when I say like so we've been a group of people not necessarily the same people since about 2012 right so that's nearly that well that's 10 years right but we haven't actually been AEU like officially actually on the go since about 2016 I'd say 2015 2016 but which it's is still a quite time. a long time yeah. exactly and I think you know a lot of people I don't know I think a lot of people think we've come from nowhere which is very very funny because I can show you photos of us playing to zero people in many different places but it's yeah I think it's you have to sit back and realize like oh no I have achieved so much of especially like I put myself in my teenage self shoes that's what I sort of do to bring my to ground myself and I go oh no I, I would have absolutely killed to be in a sweaty van with eight other men or whatever, you know traveling in Europe like you know and at the time I'm like, oh I fucking hate it but I don't I don't hate it so yeah I think I, I am definitely a critical person of w what I'm always doing but I think it's a good thing to give yourself goals and I think that I, I am glad that I'm a person that always is looking for the next thing in terms of what I want to achieve but I need to not forget that I'm still doing well and I think everybody needs to do that more yeah perspectives are difficult it's really it's weirdly easy to have in retrospect you know um i think um i always feel a little bit sort of um what's the word like i think almost self-important is the word like i'm at the grand old age of 24 like <laughs> talking about retrospective um this that and the other but you know I, I, trying to sort of it's something that i've even from talking to i think i think you're probably number maybe 35 or something like that <laughs> a huge amount um not people in life like um, bit bigger number yeah yeah but like you know um it's even just on the podcast just musicians a lot of them talk about just like you can't get wound up in the moment um and Big time. I think it's, yeah um do you feel like um obviously because sort of as a fairly young person in a, in sort of at a level in the scene where there are lots of people who might be like 20 years older than you if not more playing like mm. similar stages or um even just like place like sort of similar parts yeah. of lineups and things um do you feel like the the band gets treated any differently um or just you as an individual gets treated any differently um by some of the sort of the older lot that are turning it turning up or are they all <laughs> you know hope? the weirdest thing is <clears throat> we used to get treated more differently by older bands when we were smaller mm like it, it now everybody's in the same boat like when you're like i said when you turn up to a festival and you're like you know there's a band on after you that are like yeah like you said 15 years older than you they'll come off stage and you're like, oh man that was fucking sick and everyone's like yeah cool it's not even a thing but i feel like when it and just from experience and still going to gigs as well myself as a gig goer and i also photograph bands so i'm in crew sometimes and um i find that and yeah on a personal level is that we used to get judged more for being the young band when we were nobody and when those bands are particularly nobody it's kind of like local shows where like you know this band would be like oh you know we've been doing this for 20 years so we're like we're like the big boys and you're going yeah but we're all playing a show at the phoenix bar in i wickham so like don't like i don't know it, that was much more of a thing at a smaller level which it's like it's almost backwards but i think that attitude is what 
often a lot of the time is um you know doesn't get these people into places because it's it's noticeable you know it, it gets you know and the thing is the music industry is a very small place and um those attitudes get picked up on and you are quickly ignored if you act like that and because people aren't interested in that opinion it's not a thing like you know it's it's just everybody's in the same boat um when you're at playing gigs you're, you've got a gig together you're all on the same bill don't act like you're better than anybody else yeah i i think um i've received more advice from people at the same i don't want to say level but like in the same place as me than i have yeah. from places that are clearly you know people that are in a more successful band than me mm -hmm. you know because I, I feel like it's almost people feel the need to justify their no like, this is it i yeah. feel like that's it I, you're right like people have this sense of like like we are, obviously there's certain things like you know you have like on a financial or whatever level you have to keep secret as you would you wouldn't tell people your salary in a normal conversation but like but in terms of like, we are always happy to give people advice. And like, you know, we've got a couple of friends in fresher bands or we've got, you know, friends that are a lot younger, like and they're sort of just turned 20, 21 and they're asking us advice. And we are more than happy to tell them mm -hmm. more details than a lot of bands and people would. And I think you're right. People feel like, oh, you need to earn your, you know, you need to earn that information. You're like, no, you don't. Like, why? Just tell them. Like, it's not that deep. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why you can't tell them. Because it's things like con contracts, you know, um, things like record contracts. Tell people the amount of people that told us from bands that were our friends that helped us in what to know was normal for getting a record contract and things like that. If we had, if they hadn't have told us, we might not have known that that was a standard. So there's things, but for some reason, people gatekeep um, a lot of information, which I, I don't get. We're all in it together. I don't get it. Yeah. I think, <clears throat> like, I um there's your few guitarists out there that will um they won't share like their setup, you know. Yeah. It's like the way I always see it is if you're so good, then you shouldn't be worried or threatened about someone else knowing what you like Exactly. Get, there's yeah. the whole like thing is even if you look at a band like Sleep Token, you can still see what the drummer's playing. Like or you, oh, know, yeah. you still know exactly. what amps they're using. You haven't like. built it yourself. If you've created something from scratch yourself, like, mm. you know, that's totally different because you don't want people taking that without paying or whatever. But like, you know, you haven't created the amp and the cab and yeah. with your own bare hands. And anybody could accidentally completely do your setup. Mm. Like it's not I don't know. I just think it's very it's a very strange point of view. Um, to have like our, like my band we're just like you know people we're genuinely friends with are asking us advice we will always give it because it's just why would you gatekeep information that's just not worth gatekeeping what what's the can you think of best and worst advice you've had i don't know whether you um, memorize worst but <laughs> you know i don't know like i think i've been asked this I've, I've been asked this before and i can't remember what i said but it was it's more I think the best advice I've ever been told is like, just stick it out. Like, and I, honestly, and I know it sounds a bit naive because some people, obviously everybody's in different situations financially and stuff, but like it worked. Like we, we, we stuck it out for a lot longer than some people would because they sort of pack it in and go, oh, it's not worked. Oh, you know, it's not going to happen. And you're like, well, you've only been a band for two years. So obviously that's not going to happen <laughs> or it might, but you know, often you have to, have prior knowledge of what's going on and whatever but yeah i don't know i think worst worst advice worst advice i don't I mean, know to be honest, i can't think of the worst advice i've ever been given so no i think you just you'd just block it out wouldn't you yeah I, I remember being told a lot of things about um writing styles um in terms of like um you know, oh, you should lean more towards this style or that style. And it's like, mm. that might be more commercially viable, but actually it's not viable for me personally in the yeah. long term because I want to enjoy this. So I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I don't want to write something. For me, like as a, someone who wants to write, be creative with writing music, it's like, well, what's if I'm writing music that isn't what I want to write for someone else, it's like, well, I'm actually defeating the entire purpose of why I sat down to do this in the first place. You know, if I wanted to be a yeah, session yeah. or whatever, that'd be different because it's like you're kind of accommodating for other people. But it's like, I don't really want to do that. I want to be creative. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. It, no, it, may, it makes sense. I think that, again, like that is something that I've come across as well. Is that, um, And as a band, like, you know, we've, you know, again, we've been very lucky. Our whole team, our label are very, very happy with us being the creative control on pretty much everything we do like they don't get involved they just let us do our thing i mean 
you know, maybe that's because they like what we do. <laughs> maybe it would be different if they didn't, but it's, I don't know. I always feel like, yeah, if people tell me what to do, I actually just do the opposite. <laughs> I'm one of it's them people. I'm a li- little bit petty like that where I'm like, it's like, but that's why I started screaming. Mm. That is literally why I started screaming because, um, which is an interesting point because I think this is a part a lot of women start screaming, if I'm honest with you, is a lot of men in metal or whatever, you know, they'd be like, oh, fucking women metal band or, or whatever it was back in the day. And they'd be like, oh, I can't scream. And I'd be like, attempting to maybe do like a Lacey Sturm style, like fry. And they'd be like, oh, this shit. And I'm like, all right, then I'm going to go and fucking learn. I'm going to be all right. And, you know, I did. And, and it's just, or it's just not even people don't even have to say anything to you. It's just like the, the sort of way it is. And, you know, you sort of go, well, I'm going to do it because if men, you know, if men say they can do it, well, I can do it as well. <laughs> and I'm very much like that. If, you know, if somebody tells me, I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and prove them wrong. And that's partly why I've stuck this out for so long as well. As, um, you know, people always, you no, know, people haven't said it to my face, but you know, like you can sort of see in people's faces when I'd be like, they'd be like oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing this job, but you know, I'm, my band's doing well. And it's sort of like, oh, right. <laughs> you know, or like, you know, you go to a, like a family party or something and you're like, and they're like, how's the band? And they're like, do you, you know, what covers do you do? And you're sort of like, whereas now it's a lot more like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm actually doing this full time. And this that and the next and you know doing this tour and going to this place and I love that reaction on people's and that's that bit of part of me that I was talking about earlier so like that's a lot of my me proving people wrong has a lot to do in my psyche yeah. like I that's don't know what it is always have done I think um I think it's inherently I come from an area that's going in well deep here we go um I come from an area where um, the, the grammar school system exists where you have to like pass a test at 11 years old to get to a good school and if you don't you go to like a comprehensive school which is absolutely fine I did absolutely fine out of a comprehensive school I went on to university got a first class degree like but it's more the um the attitude and the the culture around like you're seen as a failure you are literally if you do not go to a grammar school you are a kid that's just going to become a whatever kid you know you're just oh whatever whatever and I think that that was kind of ingrained into my psyche very very young like 10 11 years old and um not that anybody in my family has ever pressured me and my family been really good and it's it's more just the, the community like culture of that and I'm always just like I just love sticking my middle finger up when I get when I do something that I feel like will finally appease those people which is so stupid because I don't need to appease those people <laughs> well it's like the people what is it the people that matter don't mind and the people oh, what is it yeah it's, i know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah um yeah that's there's an interesting point about um sort of proving proving people wrong because you you don't want to want to do it but sometimes it's just yeah it's, it's, you just but it does give it, me satisfaction <laughs> yeah it's kind of like yeah. it's one of those things i'm like apology level like, i'm like i should not care i really shouldn't and obviously as i go on i'm caring less and less as i get older what people think but deep down, I, I love that moment where I get to be like, yeah, I'm doing what I've always dreamed of doing when I was a kid. You know, like I, I, I get to do this every single day because I've worked hard and I've, you know, pushed for it. When people told me that it wasn't going to be a thing and it didn't, it wasn't really a viable option, I get to do that. Yeah. So, and I think you've got to kind of revel in those moments a little bit. We're all human, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to just sometimes go, that was cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. The uh, the deep question is: Do you think without that sort of that oh I gotta, I'm gonna prove them wrong? Right. Thing, do yeah. you think you would have pursued music? That's a deep question. And for I the think, record, I'm not criticising yeah. you in a way because no, no, no. It's a, it's a good question because it's something that I've kind of surface thought about. Um, I think I probably done it, but I think I would have given up a lot earlier than I than I would. You know, I think I think I would have because I I was in bands like since I was like. 14 you know like I was in a band before this that you know we were okay locally and we did all right and then everybody went to uni and we did our own separate things and whatever Mm. and then I joined AEU um and at first it was like never anything serious it was literally like we went around Adam's house and played covers and played at pubs like for the first two three years of AEU like I didn't see George for the first year because he was at uni like he was in the band and we didn't meet for a year so (laughs) and I think if I hadn't have been as driven and I think as soon as things started costing money because obviously, you know, things start going where you're like, oh, we need to record these songs. Oh, we need to do, oh, let's do a music video. We've never done a music video before. Let's do that. 
you know, this is when, when you're like 16, 17, and we're talking about 300 pound each, that's a lot of money when you're that old, you know, I think if I hadn't have been as driven, I probably would have been like, no, nah, I don't really want to like put any money into this. Oh, I'm going to ditch, you know, we're on a quick, could almost drive you to the shops as well now. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, it's an interesting one. Cause like there are, uh, you know, there are so many people when you interview, um, you know, where you hear about um, very like these really successful people, not just in music, I mean, just in like mm-hmm. often in music, but a bit in business or anything, um, mm. where sometimes they come from quite, even quite broken situations. Yeah. And that's what's led them to music. And you, all, you almost ask, would you, um, you know, if you listen, if you listen to someone like Corey Taylor and you hear his story, if mm. his, his background, it's pretty like heart wrenching kind of stuff in terms of like, you know his mental health and his his family life and it's taken him to where he is now and you got yeah. to he be a musician without it and it's not it's not like there's anything wrong if he would or wouldn't but it's just yeah. interesting how um i guess you almost just come to accept how you are as a person and that's you know, it and it's, it's the belief you. in it's the belief in what you do as well like you know i think if there wasn't any viable like if i didn't see that AU was going to be something decent i probably would have run you know and I think a lot of us like would probably say the same in the band but we didn't feel like this was genuinely going somewhere I think we would have ditched like you know I think that and that's just a natural human reaction but we had the belief in what we did and like you know Slipknot I mean I don't know if you know the story but they paid £40,000 to get their first demos done oh I didn't know that and that, and that yeah so, they, so when they were nobody they literally paid like 40k to get demos done to like the highest pretty much the highest quality Obviously, it was probably tapes then, which is why it cost so much and stuff. But it's like, you know, so like, and if they didn't have that belief in what they did, they wouldn't be there. So you have to kind of have this like semi-belief or full belief in what you do to be able to, it's like, you know, it's how I do like manifesting things. You know, I'm not a spiritually person like completely, but like there is like something to be said about if you, if you truly believe in what you're doing and you really, really work hard and you push for it, there's no reason why it can't happen. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a lot of, I know, again, that can come across quite naive. I know there's a lot of things like financial situations or personal situations, but if you are in a situation that you're able to pursue that, go for it. Yeah, I think that was, um, who was it? Someone got in trouble not that long ago for saying, um, oh, I can't remember saying, I'm not, for the record, I'm not saying you're saying this. Um, <laughs> what was, I can't remember her name, um, got in trouble for saying, oh, everyone's got the same 24 hours. And it's like, I know. Oh, was, was it that. Molly May? Was it that? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so, I know you're yeah, not saying it in the same way. I shouldn't have brought John. It's that more like yeah, no, it's all right. No, because it is. It's a like you know, it's it's a very sometimes a naive statement for me to potentially make because I know that there are people that I know that have had to give up their dream because they can't um, financially support it. And do not get me wrong, I'm not financial. I'm not rich, and I'm but I'm comfortable, and I know that I'm comfortable because. I'm I'm where I am, and I get to do what I do because I'm very lucky in my situation and. I have to, I have to know that. And I don't know. I think, you know, I, it, I don't know. It's I doing just, the best you can what, with what you've got, isn't it really? I think that's what, Yeah. And I think, you know, I wasn't and then you in it. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Cause it's, you know, and I don't, you know, it's, it's wrong to say that everybody has the same um, chance because I do believe that it is very different. Like, for example, like me, when I was saying about the grammar school system around here, like, it's it's seen as like people like me were seen as failures and you were seen as like oh you were just going to go to college and do like child care and like you were just going to become a 16 year old mum that's that was the pretty much the perspective of like a lot of people in the community about people like me so it's you know and a lot of those people like I don't know it's really weird the world is fucked and everybody should be able to do what they want to do and it's 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 really hard it's really hard podcast tagline there you go um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um no i i think that's um i think that it makes sense i think people yeah there's there's a balance between knowing kind of understanding where you're at in life but still yeah. doing the best you can with it. i think is it's a tricky thing to do um but um the good thing is and i'm making another neat segue um <laughs> the from what i can tell and from my sort of small experience of it um it seems like the uk kind of scene is quite sort of positive and I, it seems like you guys are pretty well sort of entrenched in that in, you know, in a good way um what's kind of been your experience of the uk scene sort of better or worse 
Oh, like really good. Like if I'm honest with you, we, we've been very, very lucky. Um, we've never really come across anybody, you know, like I could count on one hand how many arsehole people I've actually met. Um, it's, you know, meeting bands, you know, because as, as you climb the ladder and you sort of meet bands that you listen to and or are friends, um, sorry, like fans of, um, you get worried that you're sort of like, oh God, are they going to be like, assholes and they're just like not for example like holding absence although they're like very much known as like the nice people like they are just who they are like they are exactly who they are portray themselves to be same with enter shikari they're exactly who they portray themselves to be it's just and it's really nice to see that and i think that that's a thing that i really stand for as well is that like i don't like being somebody else in my real life and somebody else in this obviously you have to have a bit of a stage like persona kind of ego thing to do what you do but like I'm the same I have the same beliefs I have the same persona as I do now as I would if I've just come off stage or just before I go on stage or in any of those moments and I think that a lot of people have kind of especially the scene now the modern scene is very much like got that opinion like everybody's just like yeah we are who we are like you know we're just normal people and if you're like an ego person you tend to kind of be more outcasted yeah, it's 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 um like so yeah because we we've met a few a fair few people and I, I kind of agree like I, I've not like I said if anything the people that I've found less I've never found anyone horrifically unpleasant but the people I've in, sort of enjoyed less spending time with are the ones where they kind of tend to be you know playing some local shows or something and you almost feel like you're being talked down to um, yeah by someone who is kind of in the same place I think weirdly because um. You know, we put like an EP out uh, and and a lot of the bands we played with, I could tell kind of thought we were quite good and then would almost, I don't know if they may, and I'd be interested to hear if you've experienced this, um, kind of, I feel like they would almost feel a little bit intimidated by the fact they think mm. it's quite good and, and then they'd almost feel the need to like not talk down to you, but as, almost talk to you as if you're below them, um, almost to feel better in themselves when deep yeah. down they know that your music is just as good as theirs, if not better. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that's something, if that's a common. Uh... Uh, yeah. I again, not, not now, like, again, yeah. like not something I've experienced in the last year or two or whatever, like with what we've been doing. It, it was always a thing with local bands. And I, I don't know why, like it's, it's such a bizarre thing. Cause you just think from a perspective of like somebody who now works in the music industry and works in, you know, does big festivals and I've experienced all this stuff now. And, you know, I go to shows uh, as a photographer as a viewer, and I see like the way some of these bands act to other bands. And I'm there going, are you fucking for real? If you spoke to a member of the crew, like that backstage, they would literally just ignore you. They would literally just be like, okay, I'm not setting your shit up then. They li- like, I, I don't understand what these people, th- I think this almost like, they think they have to be like that to be a cool band. I feel like there's, especially a lot of the older bands, like a lot of like sort of, again, because like I think a lot of the younger scene kind of understand it's much, it's a much more friendly place and it's a much more tolerant place. And also like, you know, a lot of people are vegan, a lot of people are straight edge, a lot of people you know, don't do drugs, a lot don't drink. You know, it's, it's actually, that's actually more common than it is uncommon now. Um, but a lot of the older sort of, not generation, but like I'm talking about people like 35 plus, maybe 40 plus, they sort of have, still have this like old school rock and roll mentality where they're sort of like, oh, well, fucking old Kemper. And you're like, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> that's, a like, good re- that's a good vocalist <laughs> reference, to be fair, because you, know you, you know your stuff. It's fair play. Oh, no, I, I'm, I, I've, been, I've been listening to this long enough to kind of know what, what stuff is. <laughs> yeah, I should just start spouting like random things and just make one up on the fly and see if you, you know, when yeah. you, you, you say the word as well to pretend you're like on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you. No, yeah. I do know, I do know what that is, but it's you know, I feel like that that sense to be like you know, or you know, I've I have seen older bands recently bring their whole ass rig, like I'm talking about like cabs and everything when cabs are being provided at like there. And they're like, well, we want to use ours. And you're like, but they're both Marshall caps. Obviously, I don't say anything, but I'm like, they're both the same, but okay. Even if they're not, like... <laughs> it's just in- a, a club show. It's not worth it. And, you yeah. know, we've been there where we've, we've put on shows and we're like, we're providing bass cab, two guitar cabs, um, obviously bring breakables and heads and whatever, like the standard, you know, we'll provide a kit, whatever. 
and they turn up with their, all their shit and they're like yeah we want we want to put our cabs on the stage and we're like okay so we have to re-mic everything mm. in 15 minutes no like, mm. yeah and we're like no like what it like but at the time it was like you know you'd kind of be like oh okay like whatever but it's just like i don't know i <laughs> we learn from things like that you know when you're like 15 you turn up with all your gear because you don't fucking know what's going on and then somebody will tell you oh don't worry use our cabs that's that's the norm you go cool we'll leave them in the car that's like what we did but there's a lot of bands that will actively argue back to you and go, well we want to use ours and you're like okay but you've got 15 minutes changeover mm. and if you don't re-mic it all up and set all your whole drum kit up strike the kit put the new one on in time that's your problem yeah but yeah it seems to be i just I, I hate to be i hate to generalize but it seems to be bands like 35 40 plus that seem to be a bit more that way yeah i know yeah. i know i know what you're saying yeah i think it's not in the professional space more so in the amateur musician yeah. space yeah 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 um and message to all drummers i was going to look at the camera but i'm not going to do it <laughs> that, please just share stands like unless you have some complicated, I, I hope I'm not yeah. your drama. I don't know, maybe I. No, have. no, no, no. We share stands. We share stands. It's only breakables. Like unless you've got there. some really complicated rack system or something, like just it's, it's just a piece of metal. Even if it falls over, it's fine. Like rack, racks are a load of rubbish as well. Anyway, we are, we are very anti-rack in this band. <laughs> yeah, like I just don't. Um, the amount of times where like and it, 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 Mike would bring along like all his symbols and then I mean bring his stands as well, thinking he'd have yeah yeah, stands. and then every other band like the promoter's been like no bring your stands, and then every other band's like oh no well, you can use our stands like yeah, it's cool yeah. like oh so yeah. but, but the difference is you go thanks we'll just use yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's what we, I mean, the amount of times we've not been advanced information and we think, okay, we have to bring everything because yeah. we don't know what we're being provided with. But our general rule is the same as it always has been. And there are times where like, you know, especially now, like um, we do come across bands that um, do want to keep like strike their kits. But I do get that to some degree because especially now we're dealing with bands that are touring consistently and they have custom kits and they've, you know, it, it, it's a bit more kind of, like they're a bit more yeah, precious with it and i kind of understand it um obviously if it's friends and stuff like that it tends to be a bit easier to kind of do that but but at a level where you're thinking there was never a point where we didn't lend out gear mm. uh, you know when we first there was even times and even recently with um the lad the liar when we did the tour the headline tour for m's base um head like completely like kaput like i think on the last two dates or something like that and george was like just use mine like mm. just use it like it's not a problem. It's on it's stage happen. anyway. It's yeah. on stage. It's not going to get damaged from being in the same place it was while you're playing and when we're playing. I'm sorry. So that's this is one of the uh, one of your um, what do they call you know the um, not nitpicks. That's not the word. Um, you know the the what's it Th things that, the little things that annoy you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are they call? I've completely lost the word. It is kind of like nitpicky things. Yeah. Yeah, what's the? I'm totally on. I'm I totally agree. Um, right, like small gripes. I don't know. Um, yeah, no. That's not uh, what I was thinking of. I know what you mean. Um, oh my god. I'm going to think <laughs> of the moment we hang up this call as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what do you think if um, say you had to kind of do the whole thing again, you know, rewind time? What is there anything you would do differently, or maybe in a different way rather than just in a, in a practical way, like in terms of how you deal with it personally. Um, Cause obviously it's a hard process going from, um, you know, having that dream of developing a band into something that's like viable as, you know, hopefully one day a career um, mm. in terms of how you, your own mental process, you know, of, of sort of growing as a person developing through that. Is there anything you, what sort of advice, a bit of a corny question, but what sort of advice would you give yourself? Um, with that and i know you said sticking at it is the important thing. yeah i think that's it is it's time is the yeah. one thing because i think a lot of people have the expectation that they're going to get signed in the first year that you're a band when you've played five gigs that's not going to happen don't expect that to happen and if it does it's going to be a bullshit label that will give you a bullshit deal and they've probably been banged up four times like you know i might be not always you know sometimes fans can do get picked up when they're young but Generally, you know, that happened to us. Labels came to us and they were like, oh, yeah, we're not going to give you any money, but we'll take 50% of your stuff. And we're like, no. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, don't, don't be coaxed in by people selling you a dream as well. I think that's just generally a piece of advice. 
when somebody comes along not that we've been shafted we haven't but it's just like a thing that I think I would I always tell younger musicians I'm like please do not if somebody offers you something that is too good to be true do not expect it to be true just make sure that you're getting a lot like and things like the contracts the amount of times I've heard people that have signed contracts and haven't even got anyone to look at it or haven't even read it and I'm like are you on drugs like what like what what is going on like you know we got the musicians union we got my cousin's a lawyer so we got her to look through it as well and we were so pedantic about it because again like a lot of our friends have given us advice being like please don't do that make sure that you get because there's things in there like I know a band that signed to it I won't name label or anything then the label aren't functioning anymore but they were um they basically signed and when the band ended, it was in their contract that none of them as individuals could make music for the next 10 years. No, what, really? Yeah. As individuals, they couldn't join other bands, couldn't publish music under their name or couldn't publish music under another band. And they, but they didn't know. And they were like, oh, and you're like, well, that is another I would just have to, I would have to just break that contract and just be like... You, I think if you really took it to court, you would probably it would be an unreasonable request. Yeah. So I think you could get it thrown out. Yeah. But again, it's just one of those things where you're like, please don't get excited over something yeah. that mm, is not always what it seems. But also, just general advice is like, I know it's a lot of money. And I know I've put in so much money into what I do. I worked literally when I was, from when I was 16... So now, but even now, we're still putting a little bit of personal money in, not so much as we used to, but like, expect it. Like, it's it's going to cost you money. Don't expect to be getting paid for gigs for the first three years. <laughs> like, and if you do, it'll be petrol money. Like, it, mm. and I think it's just ex- manage your expectations and it's wrong and it, and it is wrong. And I fight, I will fight to the ends of the earth to make sure that people get paid you know if we do gigs we will always make sure that people get paid and we pay all our crew we pay you know everybody properly um and I, I just think yeah just expect it to cost a lot and it's sad and I had to work a lot of overtime when I was 17 18 to pay for recording and all of us did um but yeah don't expect it to fall on a plate almost you yeah. got you got work but yeah don't know I think that's just my advice. Just from what, just from speaking to a lot of younger bands recently that are starting out, that seems to be the two things that come up a lot is, why is this costing so much money? I can't afford this. And um, why is it taking so much time? It's almost, it should <laughs> almost be a bit of a reality check as well when if you're spending so much money on it and then someone offers you a contract, you've got to bear in mind, so now they've got to spend all that money on this. So. Yeah. Yeah. If they're not, if they, if you don't think they can do that, or if you don't think that they're going to do that in the way you want, you know, in the right way, then yeah, um, it's um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I think like because obviously as a musician, you're almost just required to do so or be so many different people um, nowadays, you know, um, which I think is a good and a bad thing. Like there's, it gets rid of some of the gatekeeping in a sense because you can, yeah, you can grow as an artist, where a band or an individual artist, or just like as an in- industry person. Particularly, take like photographers, right? They can mm-hmm. put their stuff on Instagram, you know, like, and I know loads of photographers that get work through just putting band shots on Instagram and stuff. But yeah, um, the uh, do, how do you kind of um, when you're obviously finding a bit more success? Um, as a band, you know, playing some cool festivals and um, tours and all this stuff. Um, do you ever, do you ever have to sort of check yourself in terms of not like? I know for a fact I would have to check myself and go right. I can't be getting an ego about this, getting too not complacent. Well, I guess complacent. You could get complacent, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because you could think, oh, we're great. We're doing this, that, and the other. Um, do you ever, is that anything you ever have to check yourself for? And for the record, whenever I say these things, it doesn't mean I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I think she's... No, 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 but it is something <laughs> it's that, like... No, no, it's a very important thing because, like, I don't feel like we're... Again, this is just from a personal perspective. I don't feel like we're, we're an ego-filled band. We are just, you know, we're all just very normal people still. And, not, and we're not famous by any means, but we are getting, like, mediocre success as the industry would probably class it. Um, and you know, as entry level success, and um, I don't know, I just like we still freak out. Like we turn up to a dressing room, we're like, oh, beers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, we're still like we don't expect anything. Obviously, we agree a, 
a fee and because but that's more because they've actually really just cost money now like you know we have a full crew we have a driver tech merge person photographer like you know our whole thing is like a, a well-oiled machine and a manager as well you know so every all of those people get paid and it's more just we and our agent will obviously agree a fee beforehand and that'll all be sorted and whatever um but in terms of when we're at shows and stuff like we are just children like what you know like we are walking around this area with the most in, biggest imposter syndrome you've ever seen like backstage at download you're walking around and like Paul Stanley's eating dinner next to us and you're sort of like what is going on like you know and I don't know if that will ever change I think you know some people it will become more normal there's certain things that have become more normal um but things like that I, d- I don't know just like we yeah we don't expect to turn up and get drinks on the rider or or we expect like beer like four beers as a minimum and they're like they like give us we get a bottle of wine they're like oh amazing like oh my god this is so amazing put that in the freezer <laughs> yeah there is this, and you know so we count ourselves very lucky in the way we get treated a lot of the time but i think actually it's just normal for what we are but we just don't expect it um yeah but i think we i don't know we our just personalities are like we're just having a good time we don't feel like we should be here as people like we don't feel like we've earned this even though we we have theoretically you know we are there because we've been booked to be there um but it's just that yeah big time imposter syndrome big time yeah. i think it is because we still feel like we're that, that little band in our hearts we still feel like we're that little band from adam's like spare room playing cover songs you know but i do feel like those humble beginnings makes you a more genuine band like not not always but i feel like on a personal for us it i think it has made us more genuine mm. yeah do you find um imposter syndrome something that is that something that I find it? See, I, I find it an odd one. Not, not in itself, but it's not something I. I might be wrong because I've never. I mean, I've never particularly got that far with a band, but mm. um, I always kind of. I think I, I. I can't remember who I was saying this to, but I almost get the the kind of the opposite where I. I almost sometimes just expect that the thing I'm doing, this podcast or the band I was in or whatever, to kind of expect it just to do well because I think it's good. And that's not from mm-hmm. a place of arrogance. I'm just like, I think it's No, no. Well, um, you're proud of it. Yeah. So I weirdly, if any success I found of these things, I've been kind of like, oh, okay, this is cool. Like this is, but then obviously the flip side is if you don't get the success that you expect and that you feel like you deserve, rock, then, you know, that's not a good mindset to have. It can be quite mm-hmm. obsessive. So like, oh. But it's a natural one, I think. I think yeah. it's just, because there are times where, like, don't get me wrong, we've been very lucky, and I think that's a lot to do with how we feel. Like, we don't feel angry or bitter over not getting anything because we've actually been very lucky in what we have got. Mm. Um, so maybe it would be different if we don't feel, we didn't feel like we'd achieved what we wanted to. Like, because we, we feel like we've overachieved on our first album we feel like we we massively overachieved on what we expected um the, the the real question will come in an album too um because i think um we feel like it's our best piece of work today i even feel with welto like it was we were proud of it but it was it was a first album and we knew that there were not problems with it but that we knew that there were things that we were like fucking hell could have done that better or like you know just we could kind of sit back and analyze it and go yeah, well, well, it's not our best, but in a way, we're like, it's the first album, it's always going to be like that. You're always going to look at it like that. Um, second album, again, like we, we do have points of that, but overall, we feel way more proud of this piece of work. Um, it's all ready to go, pretty much, and we are literally just waiting on final, final, final touches. We've done videos, photo shoots, everything's done. Nice. Um, and we're really that, proud that of that it. That moment all. when you, it's all done and you're just like, go. Yeah we're waiting for one one last thing and then that's that's it all ready to go um should have already been already it's just all been delayed um for various reasons and whatnot but um yeah i think mm, i would you know i think it's it's not so much a sense of entitlement i think it's more just like you said it's like a natural human reaction when you're proud of something you want other people to enjoy it and you're confused why other people don't enjoy it whereas with us it's the other way around it's been the other way around where we're like why do you like this? <laughs> We're like, what? Like, it's, you know, obviously there are songs like on the inside and probably hiding for myself, like the two songs I'm probably the most proud of, like vocally, instrumentally, lyrically, whatever. Um, there are other songs that people are like, oh, this is my favorite song. And I'm like, 
all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I don't get it. And I think, but so I think just the imposter syndrome is how quickly this has all happened for us. Like, especially the festivals, you know, you're going, we're going from festival to festival to festival in Europe, getting this insane treatment, you know, walking past bands that we've grown up listening to being next door in the dressing rooms to bands we are inspired by and, that that we still don't feel like we should be there yet and we are but we don't feel like we should yeah well it's good i think that hopefully that mentality will keep you in the game because you won't you know you won't be as hopefully as easily put off like you said as as some others might where mm. might still get to the same point as you there may well be bands around right now at the same kind of place as you right around the world um that have that sense of entitlement that might not take it as far because when things mm. don't go their way they won't they will take that hit a lot harder the, you know the bigger you are the harder you fall it, see, it seems to happen like that with a lot with um local bands um mm. i went to a gig relatively recently and one of the bands on stage proclaimed that they'd been a local band for far too long in a very angry tone and i was like Wonder that's why. not how to view it you shouldn't view it like that and bear in mind they were only like they look like they were at college they might have been a lot bit older but like, i was like wh what like I, I think just sometimes yeah just manage your expectations on what is genuinely going to happen yeah there might be that one band that got signed when they were 18 19 years old but that is not the norm mm. that is not the norm like most people we are around or, or peers of ours are late 20s 30s like that that is the nor the norm in terms of but you know it's it's so i don't know that that attitude just kind of grinds my gears because mm. we we never we never said that and we never felt like that and it doesn't get you anywhere complaining on stage out loud in front of your fans or people you don't know who's watching as well like you don't know if there's label people there agents there you know making a comment like that could potentially put people off and it's just not the attitude to have you know being a local band is not a bad thing either you know a lot of local bands i know made a lot of money from playing shows and whatever they're not interested in being famous or whatever but i think also a lot of people like they crave the fame more than they crave the, the actual lifestyle of being a working musician and i think also that's where a lot of people pack it in when they sort of go oh this you know i've kind of done the fame thing or, or you know i've got this attention now don't really care about anything else or yeah but i do feel like it's definitely well not always but like a lot of people do crave the fame side of it without thinking about the graph of how hard it actually is to get to that point and then that puts them off and then they get angry when it doesn't happen yeah well you only have to look at like you know the rolling stones or aussie or you know they're playing well into not just their old age but to the point where actually they're not even in necessarily great health and they're still mm. doing it. You look at Ozzy, like, he's tried his best, bless him, but he's struggling now. Yeah, I, saw yeah. it, I saw him with Black Sabbath and I saw Ozzy, you know, at Download a few years ago. Um, and uh, you know that the, the heart's got to be in it because if you're, if you're mm. not only old... Oh, he, and he doesn't need to. Like, he doesn't need to do that financially, mm. let's be honest. So he's only doing it because he wants to do it. And, mm. and, and that's it. And same with the Stones, same with any of these, like, even Kiss, like, you know... I know there's some complicated feelings on how Gene Simmons treats the um the youth of today in the oh, music he industry. Like him, he? Yeah. Oh, he hates it. And <laughs> but you know when you're watching them, you're sort of like, they don't have to do this. Like they are literally so rich and so well off. If they were genuinely in it for the fame, the fame is a byproduct. But they are they are in in it because they like doing it. Like. Because if you, if you were just like, you know, there are people that make loads of money off one song and then just disappear because they think, well, I've made my money, I've got my fame, I'm not interested in this lifestyle anymore. And that's fine. But yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. And I just, I don't know, just seeing some people's genuine expectations of what it is going to be like. And it's just not like that. It's like people say to me, oh, you know, have you done a tour in a bus yet? Or do you guys stay in hotels? I'm like, no, we are literally still in a van. Obviously, it's a relatively nice van. But still keeping on floors. We're still in floors because that's the only way we can come out of a tour, either in profit or um, sort of breaking even. You know, it's not an easy life and don't expect it to be. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> you, should tell, you should tell Gene Simmons this, see what he, his opinion of the youth. Oh, no, he'll, he'll just say that I'm like, you know, 
we're not real rock and roll, even though we are not rock and roll and we fully know that. Um, what was it? He says stuff like, like I just I got asked this on another podcast of the Sapman podcast live at Download, and they were like, Oh, what do you think? Of I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's very complicated. And I think it's wrong. I don't think people should look at younger versions. Like, music changes and evolves all the time. Like, there's some things that I don't get that even musicians and bands and artists are doing now. I'm like, What is that? But at the same time, I'm like, Nah, but this is what music does. It changes and evolves, and also you've got to keep yourself on top of that. Obviously, Kiss are from a, such a different generation where, like, there was only a certain amount of bands that you could listen to because there wasn't that many, and that's why they're all so big. Like, realistically, like Iron Maiden, Kiss, like all those bands. But now there's such a huge plethora of bands you can listen to. Local bands have like high quality recordings and videos, and you know, it's so different. And um, I think it's good to also just some advice as well that I would always give is make sure you leave your mind open to everything because as soon as you start closing your mind off to things that are popular, especially like in like metal, you know, and or anything in pop music, that's when you start becoming a bit of a gatekeeper and you start getting bitter and angry about how they're doing that. And that's not the way it's supposed to be done. It's like, there is no way. There is no literal way of doing things right or wrong. Yeah, there's things in tune, yeah. But like there's not there's not a set path of how you're exactly supposed to write a song. Like you might think that there is a way that you like, but there's not, you know. And I've had to I've had to learn that, you know, there's a lot of you know, especially with like trap metal and all these things coming up that are hugely, hugely popular. I might not particularly like all of it, like some of it I do like, but some of it I'm like, this is far too much for me like this is just like i know a lot of like kind of it's like noisy like really really like a lot of obnoxious noises that instrumentally and stuff in a lot of the trap metal stuff as well and i'm like what is going on but i have to remain open and go no this is people like this and you might not have to incorporate into your music but you have to understand it and you have to kind of go okay i get i get what the youth of today are i'm just liking (laughs) yeah i i um well yeah i mean because like my my musical preferences are probably more like straight down the line in terms of band. If you, if you took your traditional band, like guitar, bass, drums, vocals, you know, um, most of the bands I listen to are more in that kind of realm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sometimes when I hear, um, bands like more alternative kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. I remember when I first heard, for example, when I first heard Wargasm, I was a bit like, mm-hmm. like it's, it's just, it's so They're a different. controversial one. Yeah. yeah. It's just so different to what I, um, I think I might have been at their first UK show, possibly. I can't remember if I was or not. Yeah. See, I they're an interesting many... one because yeah. uh, like they're, they're a band that I really like. Mm. Um, and they are very controversial and they know that and that's kind of part of their thing. Like they, they revel in it. They love it. Um, that whole like punk thing, but like it's it, yeah, like I I actually really like what they do, but again, I was kind of brought up on a lot of like nineties club music, so like it's kind of eight. So I was brought up on like eighties new romantic, eighties kind of pop music, and like um nineties club music, and no metal. I was not brought up with metal. Like I don't know a single Iron Maiden song. Oh, you don't, don't belong single... in the industry then. Hey. Yeah, oh, I get that. I don't know a single Metallica song. I only know Scent Anger because George T- George is always like pretending that he likes it, even though it's bad. Apparently, I don't really know. Um, well, I kind of know now, like the joke, whatever. But like, um, the band's like, I, I'm like, I don't know. Like Kiss, I didn't even know what that that really famous one there. Um, I can't, I can't even remember. It's so bad, I don't even know. But it's like a lot of people think I'm an imposter because I don't appreciate it. I, like, I appreciate what they did, always will, always have done, but I don't like it. Like, I don't, I'm more of a, I would say I'm more the pop side of metal and the pop side of alternative than I am the other side. Don't all get me wrong. I love my Lorna Shore. I do love my heavy, heavy ass stuff, but I definitely gravitate more to like, my bands like Enter Shikari was such a revelation for me when I found them because I was like, this is amazing. This is like a combination of like everything I love. It's like the punky aspect, the alternative, like, you know, the rock and the metal stuff, but also like the obnoxious synths. Like, and I, and I loved it. And that's, you know, a lot of when, with the band as well, like with what we do, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's that perfect point for me where it's like, I don't know. 
I just like that, like that. And um, but yeah, I do get a lot of you know asked in interviews, and they're like, "Oh, so what's your favorite Iron Maiden song?" I'm like, "Could not name you a song." Literally I never got massively into them. <laughs> I, I know I could hum you badly, or I could name quite a lot. I could more name a lot of songs, but I couldn't really like. I could tell. You know it. Like, I could give you the hook. Yeah, I could just yeah. like the guitar riff or the like the vocal the chorus or something you know like yeah yeah you, like, i don't know why yeah and there is this weird i um i like to have kind of a, an appreciation of it like I almost, yeah. sometimes i like to know what that music's like almost just to know where you've come from kind of thing but yeah yeah you, you i don't agree have to do that like you but know it's like we, it we stood and watched we stood and watched kiss at download even though none of us were particularly fussed by it but we were like do you know what like you've, you've got to watch it like because it, it, it's such an important part of the history of what we do. And yeah. I will, and that's the thing is that people mistake me not liking the music for not appreciating it. And that's two very, very different things. Like, like I would never, ever listen to Metallica ever like by myself, but I would probably go and watch them live just out of general appreciation for what they do and what, the, and people love them. So they're not bad. Like none of these bands are bad because people love them. If it was bad, they wouldn't be anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with that. It's just, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, love, I love throwing that one out there when people are like, what's your favourite metal band? And I like, don't listen to metal anymore. I literally don't. Yeah. <laughs> so um, literally couldn't name you a metal band that I listen to at the moment. Yeah, you should try it if you um, listen to Leprous. No, never heard of them. They're, they're not. They're not really. They're not a metal band, really. So the mm. guy who, uh, who's interesting artwork you saw, I don't normally say oh. who it is, but you literally saw a picture of him. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Um, he uh, he's in a band called Leprous. The um, his drumming is he's a drummer. He's absolutely other like so groovy and just interesting. Um, and he he used to be like he was one of those street drummers where he play on like the pots and I oh, don't no, no yeah, I think. Yeah. He, I don't know. Where he, I've seen videos in, but either way, yeah. Um, but the singer, his voice is like, I've I, I've said this before. I've not been as blown away by a musician in the last sort of year or so as him. Like, mm. I remember, yeah, there are certain notes that he hits in a higher register. It's sort of, it's like his head voice, but it's it's not. It's you sort can of go full. above it, like into like falsetto, and it's like, oh. it's, yeah. But it, that's yeah. the thing. It it is, but it's the fullest falsetto almost. It's yeah. like you know where it is in his voice but like it's not it doesn't sound whisper feels unnatural but good yeah it's it may, like I'll, I'll have to i'll recommend you a track yeah send it to me I'm, I'm curious yeah um yeah i think the heaviest band i listen to now as of current is like i prevail like or cool. like one of them like you know i don't i think it's more i'm definitely more got into the and especially like production wise i'm really into like a lot of the high-end production on a lot of these records especially like i prevail their new album like in my opinion like especially i think when you're when you're in music and you're writing it and you're doing it all the time when you get some really good production you're like oh mm. i love it like it makes it makes a big difference um yeah wargasm's a band i'm listening to as well like a fair bit but yeah can't think yeah I, I dip in and out of the heavier stuff but that was definitely more when i was a teenager and i was like yes give me the heaviest thing i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of um, I wouldn't say I've mellowed out. I think my taste. I've weirdly, I've actually, I think I've almost got heavier in my music taste. Mm. Um, I think it's yeah. I'm more selected with how I listen to the song though. Like yeah, you know, the really heavy ones are more into like the instruments than the the harsh vocals. Not that I don't appreciate them, but uh, yeah, yeah. But um, so one okay, so one kind of uh, one more like question. Hopefully that will um that I'm interested here. So um. It's sort of again it's an interesting one to to ask someone like a younger person in the industry um and it might be one that maybe you can look at and see what you think of it in however many years time um whereas if i was to ask this someone at the end of their career it might not be as interesting perhaps but what what do you how do you think you've or what's the thing you're happiest about that you've developed about yourself in terms of kind of building a career and that or just personally anyway and sort of what do you think what do you think is the next thing you want to sort of work towards personally and it'd be interesting because then you can maybe it's a little time capsule you can look back at this <laughs> yeah. um i think um on a personal level it's just just more just more happiness not as much happiness but just more self-achievement I, I get a lot of fulfillment out of achieving things I've set myself. So like goals I've set myself, 
Um, I find that really fulfilling. Um, travel, like going places like traveling places like with the band. I love experiencing new things, um, experiencing new places. Um, but on a professional level, I think um, I'm really into a lot of the, I do a lot of the creative direction and stuff for bands. So um, I really like want to, delve deeper into that like going forward I want to be like um I'd like to take more of a active role I'm much more of a directorial and then hand it over to whoever is doing the thing I'd like to be more hands-on with that in the future um if I can um but yeah um don't really know just more more self-achievements because that makes me happy <laughs> yeah, yeah. well it's good I mean it gives you something to strive for doesn't it so yeah yeah um, and and improved artwork on the walls there you go yeah, yeah. Well, just getting it up on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, um, I, yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna. I'm still deciding how. What other? You obviously can't see the rest of the room. There's guitars <laughs> up in there, so you know that's that's pretty good. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I have to get you to ask a question for the next guest to start the conversation. Um, and also need you to plug a band that you feel, or actually, actually, I've been. What I've changed it to is a band, but also it can be like anyone in the music industry that you feel deserves some love so most people it's a band but you know if it's a mm. juicer a photographer or whatever you know it can be anyone okay um okay although i'm gonna have to change i always write artist pick and then if it's not actually like strictly an artist i'm gonna have to think <laughs> <about it. laughs> well everybody's an artist in some form charlie's favorite person there you go yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for this episode yeah yeah so if you've got a question I think who's your biggest inspiration and do you feel like they've shaped you as an artist? Cool. Okay. Nice. Um, well, that's quite a, quite a deep one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it depends. Yeah. It's an interesting one. So like to, um, but I won't get into too much detail, but like Alter Bridge are my kind of main inspiration musically. And, um, I find that actually I was thinking about this not so long ago, like the, in terms of, shaping kind of almost shaping you as a person like i find that the it's not just the lyrics or the, I, i'm more into the music than the lyrics if that makes sense but mm -hmm. um, i feel like even the music has a personality that i resonate with beyond the lyrics themselves so it's interesting yeah, how yeah. you feel like I you can identify with something that isn't maybe yeah isn't yours <laughs> yeah that's that, that's the thing like you know if I had to answer that question, it would be like, like when I talk about like my chemical elements, like my favorite band of all time, not only, and do you know what weirdly it's not even lyrically, like lyrically, like they are great lyrics and I absolutely adore them. But like, that's not the thing that jumped out to me. It's the whole artistry of that band. Like the whole thing from like day one to day end is thought about within an inch of a degree, you know, like all the concepts, all the artwork, you know, Gerard is the guy that does the artwork. He's very involved, which is why like, me as an artist and a musician, I've always wanted to be involved because I feel like it gives it that like depth and it gives it that like personality and that personalness to to the band, like and just like every and and, and the way like they write their concept albums, you know, that's kind of been something that um, I've like straddled on, but I, I would really like to go fully into like in the future. Um, but yeah, so it's an interesting question I like to ask people because you know your favorite artist or singer it doesn't it's not always necessarily the thing that you think like for me like people think oh you know you probably love jared way as a singer I'm like, of course i do but that is not the main reason i like my cat mm. so yeah sometimes it's like a behind the scenes thing like you said it's like you like Orbridge, but it's more the music for you mm. so yeah, yeah. I've, always, I've always liked chili peppers lyrics don't know why um well i do yeah. <laughs> sure. they're very funny enough they almost sound a bit silly sometimes but they're just yeah sometimes yeah. it will use he'll just like say a phrase i'm like that makes no sense but i absolutely love it you know yeah, yeah. Just, the words just do something you're like oh that's cool um so yeah and it also need an artist or person whatever that deserves some love that you feel like you'd like to so i'm gonna say um the Covey. um cool. they are one of my favorite bands at the moment I absolutely adore them um i just think they they do they do get a lot of like love they got really good fan base but i i just feel like they are just genuinely such an underrated band like i don't know i just love them everything they release and um i know janine's really involved in like their videos and, and their styling and the fashion and again that's something i really love that they're they've really got their hearts and their soul into that band so yeah that's all that matters 
Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean that sounded really sarcastic. I did mean that. No, no, I know what you mean. <laughs> um, cool. Is there anything you want to sort of plug um, or promote or message to the world? Um, so I don't know when this is coming out, but we're doing um, a... Uh, probably a month or so. I've got quite okay. a few in the, in the pipeline. Cool. We're, no, we're doing some shows um, at the end of August, um, whether they've been or not, but we're doing Germany and the Netherlands. Um, it's available on as everything com. Tickets are on there. In terms of the near but medium future, um, potentially some new stuff. Can't really give anything away yet. Um, don't really know if I'm honest with you, but it's it's really close. It's and I know I keep telling people this, and it's probably really annoying, but it is. I'm not making it up. <laughs> so that's that's it at the moment, pretty much. Wicked, cool. Well, well, thank you for coming on. No, so I have a good time. <laughs>